Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take these four images and combine them into this photo composite with GIMP in six easy steps. Go ahead and download all the images via the links in the description, open this one, and let's do it. All right, so the first step is making a selection of the ballerina with the foreground selection tool and hiding the background with a layer mask. Now, if you already know how to do this, go ahead and do that and then go on to step number two. For those of you that have never used it, I will quickly show you how to do it now. However, I recommend watching my in-depth tutorial on this selection tool to learn how to use and get the most out of it. And you can watch it via the link in the description below. And again, that's because I'm only going to cover the bare minimum right now. So if you have trouble making a selection with this tool, watch that in-depth tutorial. So you can grab your foreground select tool from this group of tools here. We're going to right click and select the foreground select tool. Now there's a couple of steps to use this particular tool. And the first one is making a quick rough outline around the outside of your ballerina. And then you have to go back to the beginning to complete this part of the step. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to go ahead and start the process by doing a quick rough outline. Then once you get back to the beginning, you're going to notice this little yellow circle, release your mouse button and then click enter or return to start the second step. So the second step involves brushing on the ballerina with a brush, which is automatically selected and the color you're going to use doesn't matter. It's going to select the color by default or the color you have in your foreground color swatch. So what I like to do is go in with a small brush, and do an outline on the inside of my subject. And you'll have to go in with a smaller brush for the fingers. And then once you go around with a rough outline again on the inside, you're gonna go in with a larger brush to fill in the rest of the area. So I'll go in with a large brush right here and fill this in. And of course, you're gonna spend a little bit more time than I am right now to do this for the entire ballerina. Once you do that, click your select button and then GIMP will begin the process of making a selection of your subject. So once GIMP gives you the selection, you're going to come over here, click here to add a layer mask based on the selection. So make sure you have this selected and then click add and then that will remove the background. Then you can come up here and deselect by going to select and clicking on none. All right, so step number two is resizing the canvas, repositioning our ballerina, and then creating a new background fill color layer. So let's start off by going up to image, canvas size, and resizing the height from five to 4,000. Make sure you have this unlocked, otherwise it's going to change your width as well. Click your tab key and then click resize. Now I do want my ballerina in a specific position on this new canvas. So I'm going to use my zoom tool to zoom in. I'm going to come up here and click and drag down a guide right to right around 3250. Then with my move tool, which you can grab with the letter M, I can grab my ballerina and move her up. I actually want to grab my select plus mask layer and not this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off and then I'll go ahead and move her up into position. Okay. We can zoom all the way out by going up to view, zoom and fit image in window. And this is the keyboard shortcut right here. Shift plus command or control plus J. Now let's go ahead and create a new background layer filled with transparency. And we're going to select a dark blue color. I'm going to use this one right here. So if you want to use the same color, this is the hexadecimal number. Type that in, click OK, grab your background fill tool and click inside to fill it in. Then we need to move this background layer below the other layer. So I'm going to click here to do that. Step three is creating the reflection of our ballerina for the reflection in the water. Let's grab our select plus mask layer. Let's go ahead and duplicate it. Right click on the layer and click on apply layer mask. I'm going to go ahead and double click here and rename this reflection. Let's go up to layer transform and click on flip vertical 
to well, flip the ballerina. Let's grab our move tool and move her down into position. Since the water ripples and the background are fairly dark, I want to go ahead and darken up the ballerina reflection. And I also want to drop the opacity. So let's go ahead and grab our curves tool. Let's go to colors, curves, and pull from the middle down to darken her up. I'm also going to drop the opacity down so she blends in a little bit with the background and eventually the ripples, which we will get to in just a second. So I'm gonna place this right around 18 to 20 for the opacity. And now we have what looks like a reflection. Step number four is adding our ripples to our composite. So let's navigate to the files that we downloaded. And I think in the beginning, I said there was a total of three files. There's actually four. Anyways, go ahead and grab the ripples file here and drag and drop over your canvas and it will be added as a new layer. If that doesn't work, go up to file and select open as layers to add it that way. So now we need to reposition our ripples here so that it looks like our ballerina is falling into the same area as the droplet. So right in this area here. Let's go ahead and grab our layer here and drag it down so it's below both of these layers here. And then with your move tool, which you can grab with the letter M, you can go ahead and move it into position. The only problem is it's not filling up the entire canvas on the left and bottom side. So we need to resize it. So we can do that with the scale tool, which you can find in this group of tools here, or use the keyboard shortcut, which is shift plus S. Go ahead and click on your image layer to activate it and go ahead and grab the side here and drag it to the left. Now we need to do it fairly large to ensure that when we reposition it again, it's still filling in the left and bottom sides of the canvas. Now it's kind of hard to see where to position it. So let's grab our opacity here and click somewhere in the middle to reveal the layers below. And then when you navigate to the center of the tool here, and you see this little yellow box that will allow you to move it. So click and drag it into position. And if it's not filling up the left or the bottom side, go ahead and resize it as needed. Go ahead and click enter or return to apply that size. Now what I want to do is increase the opacity temporarily because what we're going to do now is we're going to remove some of the ripples and the background of this layer because we don't need that or I don't want that in my composite. So let's add a white layer mask. We're going to grab our paintbrush tool here and we're going to paint with black to remove parts of this layer or to hide the pixels. So I'm going to start off with a fairly large brush and I'm going to go across the top and then I'm going to start following the shape of those ripples along the edge right here. And I also want to make sure that I get rid of that big droplet because I don't want that in there either. All right, let's go up to mode here and change it to multiply to help that blend in. And now we need to create some highlights to the ripples so it stands out a little bit more. So what we're going to do now is create a new layer called gradient highlight, and we're going to fill it with transparency. And then we need to grab our gradient tool and we need to adjust our colors based on the colors that we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and do this dark blue color here for the foreground. And then I'm going to click here to add a brighter blue for the transition color. So I'm going to start up here at the top. I'm going to click and drag down. So right about there. Now I do want that darker color here at the bottom. And if you need to switch it, you can click right here to flip those colors. Now the other thing we can do to restrict it and create a tighter gradient, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my escape key, is create a selection that will confine that gradient edit to that selection. So let's do that by grabbing our rectangle select tool here. I'm gonna click right up here and click and drag out to cover the entire canvas. Now with the gradient tool, you can apply that gradient inside of that selection. Once you're happy, go ahead and hit enter or return to create that gradient and then go ahead and deselect. 
Now we need to mask out this particular layer to match this one, and it's real easy to do. Before we do that, let's go ahead and move this layer down below the ripples, and then we're going to click on the layer mask here, right click and select Mask to Selection, grab your gradient highlight layer, and then add a selection layer mask, and it will copy that information to match the ripple layer mask. How cool is that? All right, let's go ahead and deselect. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and grab this guide and get rid of it. Make sure in the tool options you have pick a layer or guide selected, and then you can click and drag this back up to the rulers. All right, so the fun now begins with step number five, where we're going to begin applying the splashing effect. So let's go into our images that we downloaded, grab this image file and add it to your composite. I'm going to go ahead and move this layer above the ripples. And then with the move tool, go ahead and move this down. Now, if it's moving the incorrect layer, it could be because you have your tool option set to pick a layer or guide. Make sure you have move the active layer selected. We're now going to add a white layer mask because I want to remove this hard edge up here and then remove some of the splashing down here so we can customize that in just a second. So with the paintbrush tool selected and your foreground color set to black, you can begin removing parts of that image layer. Don't worry about taking away too much because you're going to notice in just a second, or I'm going to show you in a second, how to add some of this back randomly so it looks a little bit more natural than it does right now. And of course, you can always paint with white if you want to add back, or if you want, you could also adjust your opacity to bring back a little bit at a time with a lower opacity. I'm going to go ahead and undo that because I don't want that right now. All right, we're now going to change our brush type. So we are going to go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Brushes. And then from inside of here, you want Splat 2, which is, I believe, this one right here. So it says Splat 2, so that's the brush that you want. And then we're going to increase the size here, maybe a little bit more. And then in the tool options down here at the bottom, we're going to adjust the dynamics from dynamics off to basic. And we are going to apply a jitter of around 1.35 to 1.5. And these two settings are going to randomly change the size of the brush and alter the angle of the brush to create a randomness to the effect that we're going to apply, which is basically bringing back some of these water droplets into these areas that we erased. So make sure you have white selected for the foreground color, and then you can click and hold down your mouse and drag around, and you will see that it's randomly bringing back that splashing, but it's much more random, and it's more in a droplet format versus that large amount that we had previously. How cool is that? I love it. So we're just gonna go around the image and apply this exactly where we think it should be. And then of course, like I mentioned before, you can apply the black brush to remove and adjust the opacity. And I think my opacity is down pretty low right now. So if I went back up to 100 and did this again, I will get some brighter types of droplets in there to help blend that in. So it's not as neutral or flat as it was before. We're adding a little bit of depth now by applying some brighter droplets and of course, I can paint with black and I can drop the opacity down some more and begin removing some more of those droplets at a lower opacity setting, which again is going to create some depth in the image. And then I may want to paint around this part as well to begin removing some from there. I'm going to go ahead and increase my opacity so you can actually see what's going on. And then maybe I want to go back to white and add some back in there. So again, you're going to keep going back and forth to continue adjusting the depth of the overall splashing so it's not as flat as it was originally. So this will take a few minutes for you to go through and get it to look exactly the way you want. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this right now. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe do one more and then we'll move on to the other splash that we wanna add as well. All right, let's go ahead and add our next water splash here. Go ahead and add it to your composite. Let's go ahead and rotate it with our scale tool. The keyboard shortcut is shift plus R. 
go ahead and click on it and then click and drag it around to right around minus 90 or so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Click enter or return to commit to that. And then we are going to resize it with the scale tool. So shift plus S and then go ahead and resize it. I'm going to go ahead and drop the opacity for a moment here. And I want to make sure I have the right size and position. Once you have it in position, go ahead and scale it. And let's bring this opacity all the way back up. And I want this splashing to be above everything else. All right, let's go ahead and blend this in with a new blending mode. We're going to go with lighten only. And now it's starting to take shape. I think I want to scale that a little bit larger, though. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and mask it out with a white layer mask. We're going to go with our paintbrush tool again, and we need to actually switch back to our round brush here. And let's go with black. I'm going to bring the opacity up because what I want to do is I want to round out this part of the splash. Let's actually turn this one off so we can actually see that a little bit better. And then I'm just going to go ahead and remove it right here. Now, the other thing is we want to turn off the jitter and the basic dynamics by going back to dynamics off. I'm going to go ahead and undo that and then I get the normal type of brush again and you can go ahead and remove it from her face here. So I'm going to do that with a lower opacity and maybe a smaller brush as well. So I'm just going to click a few times in here to start revealing her face because I don't want it completely hidden and anywhere else you want to remove it. You can go ahead and do that as well. All right, so for bonus points, we're going to go back to that splat to brush and we're going to apply that same effect that we did previously around her face because I don't think it's going to be completely void of any water. There should be some water droplets in there. So let's go ahead and do that and we're going to have to put our dynamics back here back to basics and apply jitter again. And then with white, we can go ahead and apply some of those droplets back in. All right, so you're going to spend a little bit more time working on the splash effect to get it to look exactly the way you want based on your creative vision. So step number seven is to create a motion blur, because let's say you're using a slow shutter speed and you want to create the feeling of motion and you can do that by applying a motion filter. So I'm going to grab this layer here and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to apply the layer mask again, and I don't think we need both of them. So let's go ahead and turn that one off. We're going to go up to filters, blur, and we're going to select linear motion blur. So I think she's coming straight down. So I'm going to click right here. If you double click, you can actually select and type in 90, click your tab key, and that will change the direction from the top down. And now you can increase the length based on how much motion blur you want to create. I'm going to go right around 12 to 15 or so. I just want a little bit of motion and then you will apply that motion once you click OK. And then you can go ahead and do that for the reflection as well to add that realism of the motion blur. To continue elevating your GIMP photo manipulation skills, Check out that playlist to discover more GIMP photo compositing tutorials.